Hi, my name is Tyler, and today I'm going to review Dehancer. Dehancer reached out to me. They said, you'd be a perfect candidate to review Dehancer. And I said, okay. So they give me a coupon code that I give to you. You get 10% off. I get 10% commission. They lose 20%, but they gain you as a customer and they still make money. Now, is Dehancer any good? Yes, Dehancer is good. Dehancer is sometimes even great. There are ups and downs to Dehancer, but I'm gonna go over the basics of Dehancer and the workflow that I use with Dehancer so you can get a really good idea of it and some cool tips and tricks along the way. So we're gonna jump into Dehancer right now and just get started. Okay, now we're in DaVinci Resolve. Let's start off by doing a color management. Bottom right cog wheel, click on this, go to color management, screenshot this, use this if you want to. Output color spaces are Rec. 709A because I'm on a Mac display, but you can do Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4 if you want to. And the reason I do that is because it's known for gamma shifting when you export. So basically when you render a video, it looks like this, but then you render it out, it looks different. So this is how I do it. Input color space DaVinci wide gamut, timeline color space DaVinci wide gamut, working limits 10,000, output color space is limited to Rec. 709 on the gamut. And yep, yeah, that's it. Save that, you're good to go. We're gonna start off by adding five nodes. So option S five times. One, two, three, four, five. We're good to go here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna add a color space transform, um, second to last node, all right? So we're gonna add that on there. We're gonna go from DaVinci Wide Gamut into Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4. So DaVinci Wide Gamut. And then we're gonna go to Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4. There we go. And then at the very end, we will add Dehancer. We'll put Dehancer on there, we'll drag it on there. We will do DaVinci Wide Gamut Rec. 709. Okay. So we got that add-on here. What I like to do in Dehancer is I'll scroll down to the bottom. I will disable all of the tools. I'll go to the monitor. I'll do clipping indication to see if I'm clipping in the whites or the blacks. We'll scroll back up to the top. I like to close out all these menus because it's just a lot going on. So I'll press option and then click the arrow. All of them close up for you. We're good. We don't need this right now. So we are not gonna use it right now. What we're gonna do is we're gonna balance out our image, right? So we'll call this one noise for noise reduction if we need it. The next one we'll call balance, balance out our image. Okay. And then the very last note, I like to add a DCTL. And this is called mono balance by mononodes.com. And I will click on this, and this basically lets me know where my skin tone line is. So I typically want it more on the yellow side. So right now it's shifting more green. So what I can do is I can go to my balance node and I can kind of mess around with the offset a little bit and kind of get it to that place I like to. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'll turn this off. I'll look at the image, see if it looks pretty good. And what I like to do is I'll bring down the actual exposure. So I'll go to my HDR color wheels. I'll bring down my exposure a little bit. I'll look at my waveform and see where I'm playing with. And we're getting to an okay area right here. Also, next node, I'll just call this ratio. We can start kind of dialing in the actual contrast um, just by, you know, changing the lift bringing the gamma up a little bit, bring down the lift, gamma up a little bit. We're kind of dialing in that contrast a little bit more how we want to. And that looks pretty good right now. Um, and we can change this a little bit more later if we'd like to. Okay, so we kind of got the image set up where we want to right now. We'll go back into Dehancer. What I like to do is I make it into a big screen and I can still all also get all the features from Dehancer besides just pressing Command F every single time. So press Shift F. So when we press Shift F and we Z to center it, 
we can actually play with all our tools and look at the answer in a big screen at the same time. Okay, so we have all our tools set up. Press option and click the arrow. We'll close out all these menus. Input's already set up. We don't need to do any exposure changes right now. Film, we will use Co Kodak Vision 3250D for interior daylight scenes. There's plenty of film prints to use, right? If we enable this, we can kind of see these subtle changes in the image. And I'm sure this took a lot of work to do and do these film prints, but honestly, I would appreciate um, more motion picture um, options because a lot of these are photography. Gold 200 is pretty popular also. Kodachrome Experimental is pretty fun. But for now, we'll do Kodak Vision 3250D. Okay, so we have that film set up. We'll close out that menu. And what I like to do is I will go down on my print and then we will change this from linear to Kodak 2383 print film because I like that one and everyone likes that one. Okay, so we'll turn this on. We have that Kodak 2383 print film look, right? So we will close this out. We can add more contrast and do all that kind of stuff also, right? And this is a great tool. So let's just add a little bit of contrast in there. And then we can take a look at the actual expand and kind of find our white and black points, right? And when we turn this on and enable it, this is where it's clipping and showing the clipping, right? So we can turn this down. All right, so we're not clipping and we find our black point. Oh, we're crushing over there. So we'll turn that and we kind of find that good in between middle ground. And that's great whenever you have that actual on monitoring. And you also have false color too, so you can see where you're at false color wise. But this is technically showing if you're clipping, which is great. OK, so next up, we have the print set up, right? We can find all of this other information, color density. We can use that to our advantage to make it more filmic looking, um, right? And we can do film compression. This is basically just toning down the highlights for you. Um, and then you can turn on film developer here and boost contrast if needed. And then gamma, compre gamma correction is a lot like pivot. Essentially, it's like contrast and pivot. So we can move this around however we want to. We can boost the color up a little bit more, kind of add a little bit more saturation to the skin itself. Um, turn this off, turn that off. And then we can take a look at film grain in a second, halation, bloom, which is basically like works in congruence with halation in a lot of ways. And film damage is great. Film breath. Film damage is just scratches and hairs and all that kind of stuff. Film breath is essentially these micro exposure changes and tint shifts in film. So think of gate weave as physical movement of film that's kind of cropping in and shaking it, right? And doing that like kind of micro movements to it. And then you have film breath, which kind of works with that in terms of like these like weird little micro exposure changes and tint shifts. It's fun. I don't use it a bunch though. And then over scan is pretty cool. You can enable that and kind of see how it crops in for you. You can have the perforations negative or positive and it moves around and changes. I turn this off. Usually um, you can do anything from super eight to you know, Polaroid base, which is essentially the new one. Um, let's see. So you can do that and all that fun stuff on there. Positive. Um, I don't really use that at all. So super 35 one is where I go to perforation is off and we kind of see the image how we want to right here. What I like to do before I get into film grain and all that kind of stuff, I want to clean up this noise because that's kind of annoying me. I didn't want to show you grain on top of noise. So I'll press shift F and we will go into noise reduction itself and we can use the new ultra noise reduction. Sure, why not? Ultra noise reduction, right? Analyze, analyzing noise reduction. 
boop, 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 boop. Um, I don't, it's like going into that white. So I want to move that around and I want to move it here. And I want to make this better. Okay. So it got a little bit better for me there. Let's wait while it's loading. Okay. Well, that was okay. Let's, let's just not, let's just not, <laughs> um, let's go to the regular, regular one for now. Cause that's annoying me. We'll, we'll go to better temporal and we'll turn this up to like, say like seven or something like that. And we kind of get a nice noise reduction here without messing up the image and desharpening it too much. Well, not a good face. Okay, there we go. Hero shot, boom, I'm a hero. Okay, so we have that noise reduction in place. We're gonna go back here, press Shift F, Z to center it, go to film grain, turn the film grain off. Film grain is over the top and intense. Turn it all the way down, it's still intense. It says zero. The film grain says zero and there's still film grain on there. Why is it zero and why does it show film grain still? I don't know. It's weird. Um, go to 65 millimeter ISO 50, turn it down to zero. Okay. It's still there. Why is it at zero and it's still film grain? What's happening? Um, go to custom. Just always go to custom. Um, and honestly, if you turn everything down, shadows, midtones, highlights, chroma is like the saturation. Um, it's still there. Like the grain's still there. You, and then the size says one, you're like, um, I want that zero. You press zero. It, it still goes back to one. It doesn't allow you to do that. So that's the annoying part. If you want to go to zero, you should be able to go to zero. That's just ridiculous. Anyways. So we have the film grain on there. Halation. We turn halation on. This is the the tiny blooming right on the edges of highlights, custom limit your source, background gain, smoothness, local diffusion, amplify it, change your hue around, um, impact, turn on the impact, turn it back up, press Z to center it again. We have a bunch of elation. Cool. Turn down the impact before and after be a little bit less before and after. Okay. Subtle enough, whatever. Um, bloom, turn this on. We can check out what it's doing before and after a little kind of diffusion on top of the elation. We can go to custom. We can move this around the highlights, limit the source, diffuse it more, amplify it, um, change the impact overall. Okay, cool. Enable, disable, see the difference. Press Z to center it again. See the difference again. Okay, that looks cool. Okay, and film breath. We went over a little bit. We don't need film breath. Gate weave is the shakiness. I don't use that really. It's if you're doing a music video or some kind of found footage horror movie, use it. But otherwise, it's you gotta do everything subtle. So if you do film rather than gate weave, like very subtle, it needs to be not noticeable. And same thing with film damage. It needs to be like just barely there. So whenever you look at film damage and you enable it, I always go to custom on everything. So you can go change the dust amount. You can change the actual scale of the dust, the size balance, you know, just kind of bringing down the size of everything and then scaling it down. So like barely there. And I think the only annoying part of whatever you're doing this, if you have the overscan on, you're getting like this, the noise and the, the damage in the black bars of the side, like it should not be in there and you should not have to do a separate node and do all this extra stuff to get the damage, not on the bars. I don't want the damage on the bars. I want the damage on the film part, not this part. It doesn't, 
No, doesn't make sense. Um, it's just like overlaid on top. It just makes me think this is overlaid on top. This is not actual damage. Um, it should be in relation to the actual footage that I have. Um, but yeah, you could change all these parameters, turn this off if you don't need it, turn it on, see what it does when you play it back. Playing back kind of slow because I have noise reduction on and everything like that. But you get the idea. Whenever you export it and you actually look at the actual film grain and then the damage, Honestly, I was just surprised at how amazing the film grain was. Because um, at first, whenever you're doing it, you don't really see it playing in real time. So you're kind of like, okay, film grain's film grain, whatever. But then you actually export it and you're like, wow, this is the best film grain I've ever used. And I've used good film grain. Okay, so we turn off film damage. We have everything over here. Um, gate weave, no, we're not gonna use that. Overscan, we've already used that. Vignetting. Vignetting's cool, so you can do a vignette. Turn down the feathering so you can see where you're at and do aspect ratio changes, change the size of it, and then feather it out again. And you can kind of get a really good idea of where your vignetting is going. And monitor false color, looks good. Nothing is crushing, so we're good to go because we have the clipping indication on there nothing is doing anything crazy we can do output total impact this is great because this doesn't work exactly like key output gain it works gradually with your spatial effects so it's not just like overlaying the grain and keying it out like crazy uh let generator you can let generate LUTs from 17 cube to 33 cube. I wish there was a 65 cube option. That would be awesome. But even whenever you do 17 or 33 it's, or 65, it's not going to do any of these spatial effects. So you're just going to be getting the color anyways. So whatever. But 33 cube is fine. Um, options, normal, fast, high, slow, high, slow. Yeah, I mean, that's great. You want to have the best quality, right? So there's me with my eyes half wonky and weird um let's scroll through and oh, oh i'm looking at, oh i'm looking back yeah this is this is a boring shot of me but you get the idea of dehancer and what you can do with it and cool tips along the way shift f to make it look bigger option arrow to close everything down right get in here under options disable all tools boom disable all tools tight all right that's it okay well that is my honest review of dehancer do i think it's a great product yes do i think it's perfect no there can be some things to be fixed in organizing dehancer's layout in general but i think it is a great tool to get you where you want to go have i used other film emulations that i like more Yes. And I think the film emulations that I like the most are the most simple, meaning I'm going to be able to do most of the work and they just kind of get me there to the end point. And one of the best film emulations that I have used is Filmbox by VideoVillage.com. And it's quite more expensive, but it's definitely worth it whenever you see the differences, say from Film Convert or Dehancer, and then you look at Filmbox, you will see the, the difference. There's something else going on in the back end, and they're almost using their own color management system. Uh, I didn't mean to go on a rant about Filmbox, but it's great also. But Dehancer is amazing, and it's a great upper echelon film emulation plugin to use if you're tired of using other cheaper ones or other looks that you can't get that film look. This really gives you the film look. So if you like the product, download it for free, test it out. If you like it, get the product. And when you actually finally realize that you need to purchase the product, um, I have a discount code. It's Tyler Dehancer 10. Use it if you like it. If you don't, don't use it. But that's it for today. Like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye.